Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Health Talk podcast where knowledge meets compassion. So today uh, we have a renowned oncologist from Faisalabad joining us to shed light on the topic of paramount importance breast cancer awareness. Uh, so today we are joined by Dr. Tahir Bashir, consultant medical oncologist, head of department oncology uh, in Faisalabad Medical University and uh, affiliated hospitals. Through this episode, we will explore or discuss later advancements, including targeted therapies, uh, spotlighting their role in early and later stages. We will also emphasize the significance of early detection and regular screening, particularly concerning its prevalence. It is the number one cancer which is affecting our female population. So by understanding its risk factors and later studies, uh, we will uh, emphasize the female and work together to empower their knowledge regarding breast cancer. So throughout our conversation, he will be providing important information in simple language and making it easier for all of us to understand. So, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, assalam. Uh, Asha, sir, my first question is, uh, what are the most effective methods for breast cancer prevention? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Roha, for inviting me over for this uh, interview to share my thoughts. And I'm thankful to Hemel Pharmaceuticals for leading this campaign all the way, all over the Pakistan, and uh, giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on this very important issue. Can you please repeat the question for me? Uh, so what are the most uh, effective methods for breast cancer prevention and how important is early detection in improving the chances of success? This is a very pertinent question. Uh, I want to share a few of my own perspectives uh, before answering your question. I see a lot of colleagues saying on the media that uh, we celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we celebrate October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I believe that this is probably, celebration is not the right uh, word uh, for this. I believe this should be a very pertinent, thought-provoking thing uh, and we should come up with the solutions that how everybody knows that early diagnosis helps. But to know that early diagnosis help is not, helps is not enough. We should come up with an tangible solutions, with ideas, so that so that oh, we can manage and combat this disease. Coming back to your question that uh, what are the most effective methods of prevention and what is the significance of early detection? There are a lot of uh, like uh, breast cancer is one of those cancers which is preventable. Breast cancer is a preventable disease. We have a lot of models available like modified Gale model is one of those uh, models from which we can calculate the actual score on the basis of which we classify or categorize the females or families who are high risk, intermediate risk, or standard or general risk. So chemo prevention is at the top. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a treatment modality in which we use uh, like uh, oral drugs for prevention. This is called chemo prevention. This is generally recommended for standard to uh, intermediate risk females. Generally, intermediate risk females for high risk uh, prophylactic mastectomies is an option. How do we actually get to know this? That what is the risk stratification? So this is done by genetic testing, and uh, the calculation is done by modified Gale model. So, like uh, if we take all these points and bullets, so prophylactic surgeries and uh, drugs which are like uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators, tamoxifen, raloxifen. These drugs are, uh, like help us a lot in prevention of breast cancer, maintaining a very healthy weight, a good BMI, exercise, consumption of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. These are few things which uh, are helpful in prevention of breast cancer. Coming back to the mod modalities for early detection, Early detection, again, it depends whether the person who is coming for screening, he, uh, he or she, because breast cancer is also diagnosed in males, although its percentage is very, very, very low, around 0.1%, 0.1 to 1%. So it depends that family, which in which risk category the family falls. If uh, generally speaking, American Cancer Society and all the Canadian task force, they recommend that from 40 years and beyond, 
all the females should have annual mammogram. And this is for everyone. And for high-risk families, high-risk families are those families which are BRCA gene positive or who have family history where mothers or grandmothers are sufferers of breast cancer. In those cases, these uh, guidelines are more robust, like they can get these tests from their 20s. And uh, clinical breast examination and self-breast examination comes in this like uh, scenario. All those females who have high risk, they they can start their clinical breast examination or early screening like during their 20s. And self -exam breast examination is a very, very, very easy thing which can everybody can do. And uh, like it also, it also helps a lot in early diagnosis of breast cancer. Uh, so as you mentioned about gen uh, genetic testing, how do genetic factors contribute to the risk of developing breast cancer and what role does genetic testing play in identifying potential risk for individuals? Genetic, uh, because uh, breast cancer is a disease, rather it's a disease spectrum which has uh, genetic etiology as well. Actually speaking, it's a, it's a multifactorial etiology disease. Around 10% cancers, uh, they have like, they are attributed towards the genetic risk factors. So genetic testing is important, particularly in those patients where all the generations are suffering. So if we come across uh, a patient whose mother or grandmother is suffering from this disease, we should certainly go for BRCA testing or other genetic tests which are available. And uh, then if these tests turn out to be positive, then that family or that individual is declared as high risk. And the screening recommendation for those families, they are more robust and they need to be more careful. As you mentioned that a uh, few individuals who have a strong history of breast cancer, they are prone to develop breast cancer. But uh, if an individual have a history of other cancers like ovarian cancer, prostate, lung, any other cancer, are they prone to, de uh, to develop this cancer? This is a very good question. I mean, there are families and uh, there are a few diseases which we call syndrome or syndromic patients or families. Patients can present with multiple cancers like uh, one of them is breast ovarian cancer, particularly females and females like females present with ovarian cancer, breast cancer, they can suffer from other cancers as well. There is a syndrome called life from any syndrome in which TP53 gene is mutated, particularly in those patients or those families who are suffering from this gene mutation, they, they, the, those family members can present with multiple cancers. And even we see in our clinics that a patient comes with a breast cancer, he or she gets treated for the disease. Like after next three, four years, she comes with an ovarian cancer, she again, she's been treated for that ovarian cancer. So uh, there are families where more penetrant genes are mutated. They suffer from syndromes and they suffer from multiple cancers. And they are, they are really unlucky people, but this happens. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned before, that you uh, there uh, there is a percentage that man can also develop breast cancer, although it's rare. But uh, have you treated any man before? And also, what are the prognoses? And uh, are the uh, uh, this cancer is aggressive in man as compared to women? Thank you. This is this is very very important question, particularly for males, because uh, uh, screening recommendations are not. Uh, for males because the, the, this, this cancer is very uncommon in males but the, all the other treatment options are same they undergo same diagnostic tests same treatment modalities everything is same almost and uh, i will particularly like i would like to mention that those families who are high risk who have breast cancer sufferers in those males they are vulnerable to breast cancer they have more tendency to develop breast cancer and they need to be very careful about anything appearing on their chest walls or axillae in both sides. They should also like keep an eye on this. We generally don't uh, like face any challenges while treating male patients and uh, we have treated a lot like in last one decade, I have treated more than 10 patients and their prognosis is excellent. In male patients, disease is diagnosed early by default because uh, 
uh, there is very less fat on male chest wall and anything appears like the, that is noticed more common than females. So in our experience, uh, like patient, uh, if a male patient comes with breast cancer, treatment remains the same and uh, everything remains the same. Only those males who belong to those high risk families or unfortunately any family which is suffering from any particular syndrome, they, they, they need to be more, more careful for this. Okay. Uh, breast cancer diagnosis and treatment can be emotionally challenging. What kinds of psychological support and resources are available for patients and their families during this journey? Uh, thank you very much for asking this, asking this question because uh, we have like a lot of challenges. Our patients, uh, first of all, we don't, we have partial universal health insurance in our, uh, in our country since last three, four years, which is very helpful for, for patient. Our patients, initially they suffer from financial issues or financial toxicities of treatments. Then biopsychosocial support is, is the next challenge. In our Eastern culture or particularly in Pakistan and keeping uh, in view the Islamic values, we generally have better family, friends and other support systems than the Western patients. They, they, they suffer more from this psychological or biopsychosocial uh, uh, trauma. Our patients, they, they get a lot of support from their families, from their siblings, from their like parents or from their uh, all, all the sons and daughters if the parents are suffering from this disease. So financial challenge is a major challenge, then biopsychosocial challenges are there. And uh, I believe our patients, uh, they, they face these issues, but uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is not a big issue for our patients. Uh, the issues uh, are when they need to spend money out of their own pocket, that becomes a challenge. Or uh, particularly those elderly people who, who do not, unfortunately, do not have such support available, they sometimes suffer from this challenge. But we, we try as, as a physician, as an oncologist, we try our best to provide them maximum biopsychosocial support and all the, all the things which, which are needed for the treatment. So before going towards a specific treatment option of breast cancer, uh, some patients approach us and or explore alternative therapies alongside with conventional treatments or targeted treatments in breast cancer. What is the oncologist or your perspective on this? My personal point of view about the alternative therapy, I generally don't comment on this because I don't know much about this because in various cultures, like if we go to the West, there are groups who are promoting many alternative therapies. This is not common in Pakistan, but in our culture, there are many like rituals or there are many things which uh, interrupt the treatments, which uh, lack to like lack of uh, adherence to treatment and uh, poor compliance to treatment. People like every third or fourth treatment uh, patient, they have tendency to go for alternative options or alternative treatments. This is the duty of uh, a treating physician or treating oncology team to sit with the patient, spend time with the patient and explain the importance of treatment that if adherence or compliance to treatment is good, that is key to success. Only early diagnosis is then, uh, is then beneficial for patient if he gets a proper treatment from a proper center. And uh, regarding alternative treatments, because evidence is lacking, so my perspectives are that every patient or every family who is challenged with this disease or who is suffering or struggling with this disease, they should strictly remain compliant to the treatment facility, treatment center or treating physician. And they should not opt at their own uh, for any like alternative therapy without uh, bringing into the notice of their physician because in oncology, we use a lot of cytotoxic and targeted drugs which have like many interaction with the other compounds, if they, they like use to continue their desi uh, kind of medicines or uh, other modalities, they may end up with catastrophes even. Like that will not only not benefit the patient, that will harm the patient mm -hmm. and that harmful thing can be catastrophic and uh, fatal. Uh, <clears throat> my last question is that uh... Uh, is breast cancer is a curable disease and can you share some latest breakthroughs or advancements in breast cancer research or treatment that have emerged in the past year? Certainly breast cancer is a curable disease like 
many decades before uh, only this disease was treated with surgery. Then uh, in 1940s, radiation came up and people started getting radiation of surgery. And then cure became more, more and more uh, in, the, in the form of percentages. Cure rates improved in 1960s or 80s. Then chemotherapies developed in early 2000s or uh, early part of this century was, a, was an era of personalized treatments, targeted treatments. So cure, cure rates are like uh, if a patient diagnosed with early stage cancer, stage 1, 2 cancer, they are approaching nearly 100% or more than 90%. And even patients who present with locally advanced disease, they get a lot of treatments and they have a lot of options to downstage the disease. And they also achieve similar kind of results, but odds are like around 80%, 60 to 80% for say stage three disease. I would like to mention that breast, field of breast in oncology has evolved in a such a way in last two decades and the treatment landscapes are completely changed now. Uh, patients are getting targeted therapies. There are a lot of uh, hormonal agents available, CDK4-6 inhibitor drugs, anti-HER2 therapies. And even patients who present with the stage four disease, they survive for years. We have our own data available of last 10 years that we have like uh, uh, patients whose number is in hundreds who are surviving more than five years with stage four disease, but provided they have got the standard of care treatment for that. So it's a curable disease and cure percentage of cure is very high if the disease is diagnosed early. And if disease is diagnosed in the advanced or metastatic stages, cure rates exponentially drop. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us your time today and providing your expertise and knowledge regarding breast cancer. So for more informative videos, you can visit our website www.himalpharmaceuticals.pk or you can visit our different social media platforms. Till then, take care and allow.